All right, so I gotta tell you, I've been really looking forward to this one because I know you're a new polisher. You haven't been doing it all that long. And uh, we definitely want to get some uh, some more new guys on here because you guys are the ones listening to these podcasts. And I want to be able to get your perspective of the industry and things that you want to hear. So this is, uh, I think, going to be episode maybe six or seven. Um, you're on in the early early stages here. I know who you are. This is my first day actually getting to meet you. Um, so why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? <coughs> and uh, my name is Gavin Disney, uh, owner of Disney Polisher. I'm Clarion, Iowa, small town Iowa. Been doing this for two years last July. Two years in July. Two years in July. Wow, so you're green, green yet? Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. something every single day. And do you do it full time? Uh, no, actually, I have a full time job during during the week. Really? So I do mainly on the weekends. Winters is pretty slow. If I can get a pontoon or something in the winter, it's yeah. Other than that, I don't know a lot of guys want to get their stuff done in the winter. You started pretty much the same way I did then. Like I started off just part time. I mean, my first first three years were well, my first two years were just weekends. And then after the first two years, it went into weekends and during the week. Yep. Like it just started spiraling out of control from there. I'll go to work during the week, and then most of the time I'll have trucks to do after work. Yeah. So I'll go home, shower, yep. and recuperate, and go back out and <laughs> do what I can for as long as I can. And, and I know you're a hustler too. Like you work the long hours too. I mean, I did yeah. that for a number of years, and I, I've talked to you a number of times where you were like, "Yeah, it's been two days. Yeah. That no sleep. We're just hustling." Yeah. And we do the same thing at the shows. I mean, that's just I, how it is. That's usually what it is, is just show weeks. I mean, we get only two of them that are really close to me, and then everything else is, well, we only went to Dallas, and all this year was closed. Yeah. Same with Kentucky. So we were going to go to those places, but it didn't work out. So hopefully next year is going to be big, and we're going to go all out with that. So. Yeah, and I'm I'm looking forward to hanging out with you more at, um, at Louisville for sure, and then Dallas, of course. I mean, you guys do some pretty big rides over there. I mean, yeah, uh, the biggest one that really put me on the map would have been Clinton Schuster for the show hotel. Yeah, he won the calendar or won the cover of the calendar, and then that was the very first one I've ever gone to, and That's he awesome. wasn't even there to show it. Yeah, so we had one of his friends bring it down. We ran through the rain, so when we got there, we had to wait for it to uh, get off, and uh, we sat there till midnight. Wiped it down once more, and it rained again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We I must have just it. missed you. You left the day before I got there. Because, like, we were wiping down in the rain, too. Every time it would stop raining, we'd be wiping yep. our guys down. And yep. to anybody that's ever been to an outside show, like, I feel like that's just how it is. The beauty of Shell Rotel is you can wipe down until you do your drive through judging. Yeah. So, like, there is no real rags everybody down. Everybody else is in the same spot that you are, too, because they're outside as well. Yeah. So there's not people inside or outside. So and that's, everybody's in the same boat. That comes down to why I really love Dallas. Like, Louisville and Dallas are here and here for me. Like, mm -hmm. they're neck and neck. Um, Louisville, because it's the trucks that everybody's been building all winter. You yep. get to debut them, all the stuff you've been working on that you've been hiding all winter that you haven't been able to talk about. You get to finally show that off. Yeah. Dallas is nice because it's inside, it's in yeah. the AC, it's a controlled environment. Yes, the one door is always open so you get a little dust on everything, yep. but you can maintain a relative, I'll use air quotes for this, relative clean yep. at Dallas because you're just getting the dust from, from the actual I building. agree with that. No, I wasn't able to make Dallas. When I sent, or when TJ Kunkel asked me, which he drives that purple truck Joker. Yep. That was the very first reveal for that truck and that trailer. That was so, the first interior that I looked at that I was like, this is crazy. He went all out. And he I can all out. You can blame TJ for why I did the interior <laughs> of my pickup. Because when I saw that, I was like, I have to do my pickup now. Oh, like, <laughs> man. I mean, that is, they went above and beyond. Yeah. That is, then he even did it on the fenders, too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The way, I don't know, the way that truck That's just crazy. ties in is nuts. Yeah. The yeah. level of detail from front to back, yes. all the way around, is just, it's what I like to see mm -hmm. in a show truck. Yep. Like, everything's tied together, everything makes sense, and you you have a story behind it. Like, he, he had a way to pitch it on why he did everything he did. And the very first thing when he got out of that show was he went and got a load of sheep, and he backed into the chute and they had rusted nails. So it was pillars that I just got done doing. And oh. he called and he's like, dude, I messed up. I was like, 
he got in a wreck or something. <laughs> I was like, dude, at least we got done with the show. But no, he backed into those, and yeah, it was wrecked. So we did it a little more sandy and got that coming back. And I got to tell you, for you just being doing this for two years, <clears throat> when I walked around and looked at that truck at the show, I was like, this kid's going to do something. Like, you guys had that, that thing on point. I like, appreciate that. I can, and I'm not just trashing other people, but I know polishers that have been doing this far longer than you that are not achieving that clarity that you had on that truck. And I know you spent a lot of time on it and you, you wanted it to be right and you did it right, but that thing was crazy. I mean, you should appreciate be proud of that thing. I appreciate that. And I'll be honest, those wheels kicked my butt, but <laughs> my boy Gage, he did, I mean, from start to finish, I think he stopped to piss like once, yeah. and he just said, nope, I want to get done, I want to get done. So <laughs> he did there. all those ins and outs. I'm excited to get time. Gage on the show, too, for what it's worth. Gage like, will be here, and he, I'll, you listen to me, bud, you'll be here. <laughs> but, I've, I've talked to him a number of times, and I love, the, I love the ambition that this kid's got. Like, I can't wait to meet him, and for what it's worth, Gage, if you're listening, I definitely want to have him in the shop to actually yeah. polish and hang out for a day. <laughs> He is one of those, he's the hardest working 17 year old high school kid that I've ever met. That's awesome. I mean, when it's during the show week, I remember the one that we had in my hometown. I was up for 73 hours straight and he came up to my room when I got home at four o'clock that morning. We were supposed to be up at 5.30, yeah. wiping trucks down. He came up and shut my alarm off. So I didn't wake up till <laughs> seven and I was like, shit. So I got downstairs. Oh, I probably can't swear on camera, my bad. No, that's okay, one or two is okay. Okay, and I was just mad. And I came downstairs and his truck was gone. And I was like, that little son of a gun turned my <laughs> alarm off. And yeah, I got there. He had two trucks wiped down. He had them all wiped down, ready yeah. to go. And he was, That's yeah, awesome. the other ones were already parked and just ready for us to just finish them out. I got a really good crew so, of guys when we're at the shows too, but I'm usually the guy that's up. And if my guys aren't up, I'm sorry, find a ride. Because yeah. I will be there to make sure my trucks are wiped yeah. down. And Dallas, I don't go to bed until it's rags down. Yep. And even then... I still got to be at the show all day and shaking mm -hmm. babies and kissing hands and mm -hmm. like so i think last year was well, what did i say it was 42 hours straight or yeah yeah it was I something that, crazy yeah, it was not it was like you get there you got to schmooze with everybody you got to go to dinner with the people who want to go to dinner it's like dude i've been up for 42 hours straight like <laughs> I, just I need wanted, a nap yeah. I just, just like power nap, a 20 nap. minute power nap. <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah. yeah zach passed out in the chair uh, sitting next to Tim Cody's truck for like three hours at the show I that day. a funny story about that too. I caught Gage sleeping on a creeper underneath the semi one time. Oh, dude, Tyler The Tyler's grinder was right next to him, but thank God it wasn't on. But yeah, I, looked, I was like, where the heck did Gage go? And I looked in my truck and he wasn't there. And the guy at the shop that we were in, he's a good friend of ours. He owns a trucking company as well. And he started pointing underneath the truck, and sure enough, there he was. was <laughs> the year before, down at Dallas, Ty was sleeping underneath um, <laughs> Eric Turner's truck, and Eric caught him. He's like, hey! <laughs> it's lucky scared. he wasn't by the air horns and turned them suck. Well, you on. can't inside the building at Dallas. I mean, everything's oh, going to be disconnected. Be dead, but yeah. it, was, it was funny, because he like sat up really quick and almost hit his head. <laughs> like, it just happens. Like When you're oh, 42 yeah. hours straight, and you're laying on a creeper, and all of a sudden you get comfortable for a half second, yep. like you just pass out. Like, yep. Just how it gets. The hardest thing for me is waking my hands up in the morning. Oh yeah. It takes forever for my hands to wake up, and you know, there was only one job where I went to go pick up a grinder and it just fell through my hands. I mean, it, oh, dude. That, my worst ever was uh, 49 hours straight holding a grinder. Like I was at, I want to say I was at Louisville that year, and for some odd reason, one of the other polishers out there had like the big lights hooked up to a generator yeah. like the big generator lights he must have rented them or something so we stayed up all night that year and just hustled um, the weather was decent it was warm um, it's a little muggy that year it was like 49 hours straight and the 49th hour I like fell asleep doing a wheel with the grinder in my hand oh, really? and the grinder went whack and slipped out past me I'm like you know what I'm going to my truck I'm gonna take a half hour nap yeah come back and I'll be fine. Hey. I ended up sleeping like two hours. <laughs> and my guys come wake me up and they're like, uh, we gotta go. I'm like, all right, I'm up. It like, worth losing a finger and breaking a nose or something. <laughs> well, that's the thing, like I just had this conversation with Kavan uh, yesterday. Um, he wanted to start running Big Grinder and he's been complaining about how heavy the little grinder is. I'm like, dude, you're not ready for a Big Grinder. Like, no. I know people have lost fingers. Oh, yeah. Like, 6,000 to kill you. Yeah. Like, it, doesn't, it doesn't care, it's a machine. It's got yeah. no feelings. 
I mean, I've got stories of dad. He never, he had the little 3500 RPM one. Yep. And he took the big one one time, and I was on the opposite side of the truck. Thank God it ran out of cord and unplugged itself, but it came across my lap, and I was like, what the heck? And I asked him, I yelled at him, are you okay? He goes, that's a little heavier and a little faster than I thought. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, you get those new guys that don't necessarily know what they're getting themselves well, everybody into. wants to be the big guy yeah. you know everybody wants to be a big boy everybody wants to do it See, hard i never i never used a 6000 because i was worried to burn stuff yeah so i was always doing 3500 i was always making everything so much harder just because i was doing 3500 i couldn't heat it up anymore. yeah so last year was the first year i started doing just about everything except for your cotton terrier yeah but other than that everything else was with the 35 before when I started out. That's awesome. You know, and I started with a 3500 <coughs> as well. I shouldn't say that. I started with a 5000 Black uh, Milwaukee. Honestly, I still believe 5000 RPM is the perfect RPMs for polishing really? metal. If you ever find a pallet of 5000 RPM grinders, buy them. I'll split it with you. Like, yeah. <laughs> they are the best grinders on the really? planet. You just can't find them anymore. And if you do find a 5000, it has no torque. There's no power at all. Like, I need a 5,000, like the old Black & Deckers or the old Milwaukee's. Yeah. The old Black & Deckers were the best. Like, it was on or it was off. There's really? no magnetos. It was hardwired. So as soon <laughs> as you flip that switch on, it was on and it was going. Really? But 5,000 is the perfect speed for polishing really? metal. Like, it builds heat right away, but not too fast, not too slow. It's like, I don't know. It's the perfect speed for coloring. Like, my work was, with the 5,000, was like very little hash minimal hash in my early part of my career mm -hmm. now it's like i can do minimal hash at 6000 rpm and i figured it out like more compound yeah. more off or less compound more often and i figured it out but it's still see 5000 you didn't have to try hard really <laughs> yeah definitely not huh. well, like that's the, a secret I've never heard the compound before. liquefies like perfect at that 5000 rpm really? i don't know why i don't know why because I've tried 4,000 RPM grinders and it doesn't doesn't work as well. So that extra thousand. That extra thousand is like the perfect number. I, I don't cool. know. I wish I could find a pallet of them because I'd buy them. But what got you into polishing? Actually, we went to Louisville the very first year I went. I had to get good enough grades to go, of course. <laughs> but we went to. It was it's made, a good incentive. It is a very good incentive, and I'm glad I made the grades. <laughs> that was awesome when I went there. I mean, I got whiplash looking at all the girls down there. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean. When we got down there, the first thing Dad walked into was this guy polishing a tank. Yep. And he ended up Bush. Bush, yep. Bush products, yeah. Yeah. He ended up buying the kit, bringing it back home, and he was, I didn't know where he was. I wasn't old enough to drive, I don't think, yet. I was like, I was only 13. Sure. And Mom dropped me off at the shop, and all I heard was this loud noise. I was like, what the heck is he doing? Yeah. So I went over there, and he's black. I mean, he's got yeah. he's got his glasses on that he always wears, but <laughs> he had a mask over, and I mean, he just looked like he was... I don't know, ready to go inside of a bin and clean a bin or something. Sure. And I was like, what are you doing? He says, I'm polishing. And he flipped over to the other side, and I was like, whoa. Like, holy crap, that actually looks pretty good. Yeah. And me being the cocky little teenager I was, yeah. I said I, was, I could do better than that. And he said, good, because I'm tired. And he handed it to <laughs> me and took off from there. So I started doing his friend's dad's been trucking for 20-plus years. Yeah. So. And honestly, I know a lot of people that walked into Louisville, yeah. saw Bush polishing his tank there, and they were like... Instantly thought, I could do that. I can do that. Yeah. Like if this, and no disrespect to Bush, he was an older guy mm -hmm. for most of his Louisville career, and everybody walks in and they're like, well, if this old guy can polish a yeah. tank, I can polish a tank. Yeah. And they don't realize there's a whole art behind it. No. Like, and Bush has it locked down. Like, he's been doing this a long time. Yeah. He's very smart, he's very capable, and he knows exactly how to do it. And do it right yeah he's got some very good products yes they do have very good products they were uh, a product that I used for a number yep. of years as well um, when I when I had originally left Zephyr and uh, Keystone was what I had easy access to here okay. when I left those guys um, we started buying from Garfield and Satex and then we also bought Bush products in between because it became more easily accessible we had a uh, little shop not too far from here that started selling bush products. Okay. So we had access to all that. So we just used whatever we could get back in the day. And then same thing in my hometown. I mean, they, all they had was bushes. They all had California Custom. Bush yep. Stuff. So that's what... Yeah, California we, Custom was a big part of my career as well. First thing we used was a deoxidizer the first time <laughs> that they told us to use and went around with the purple one. Man, that looks good. And 
as soon as I like I said, I kind of did the same thing you did. I started out by hand, just doing uh, family farms back home, so we had trucks all the time. Sure. And uh, we just kind of did it by hand. Then we found out you can get a uh, mother's ball on a drill, and it makes it look even better. <laughs> yeah. And then came down to. I started on an old DeWalt. I think it might have been a 3200 RPM grinder. Yeah, the DeWalts were 3200s, yeah. the old ones were. Yeah. Yeah. They that's weren't what, even 3500. That's what Dad had. That's what he started on. And that's funny. That's what, that's what I know a lot of people that started because of walking into Louisville and seeing yeah. Bush doing his thing. I mean. And I get phone calls all the time asking if I could come over and teach these guys how to do it, or I just want to be able to do it myself. And honestly, if I don't have to make time to go do your truck, I'll gladly come and show you how yeah. to do it. I mean, I'm not going to be one of those guys that. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna show you. I want you to. I always tell people it. like, I get guys all the time that are like, "Do you care if my mechanic watches you?" I'm like, "No, honestly, I don't." Like, as long as he's not stopping me from yes. doing my yeah. job and like asking me a thousand questions, yep. and I can't like if my if I like I told you the truck that's in my shop right now will take me like an hour and fifteen minutes. Yep. If your mechanic takes me from an hour and 15 minutes to five hours, yeah, it's ruined my day. <laughs> so like, I, I don't mean any disrespect by that, yeah. but like. I'm losing out on three hours and 55 minutes worth of production. Which is two more, three more trucks. Which is another truck or two. Like, and that costs me money, which if you want to pay for that, fine. Like, then you may as well do a class, spend the $500, and I'll eliminate a truck from my shop and I'll teach a guy, you know? Like, it's just easier that way. I've I've never had a problem with that. I mean, I usually get, I mean, fleet guys that just come and watch over my shoulder or something like that. But... Usually I ask if they have any questions if I got a break or something. I said, no, I'm just watching. Yeah. So either they know how to do it or they're just kind of seeing if they even want to do it or yeah. they find out that looks like a lot of work I'm not <laughs> Most guys try it and they're like, that's nice, but I don't want to do this myself. Like, this is it beats you up. Yeah, that's like, what a lot of people say. Anybody can polish one time yep. and do a decent job. And they have all the stuff sitting on the shelf, but they just don't want to do it. But to do it every day, day in and day out, like you said, your hands, you got to wake yeah. up in the morning. Like, I stretch a lot. Throughout my day, I stretch a lot, I need so that to stretch. you need to start stretching because I remember back in the day when my hands would be so sore in the morning I couldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Now I do stretch back hand, stretch forward hand, so okay. that my wrist and my hands are awake yeah. when I go to bed. So oh, that when I wake up, okay. so when I wake up, they're still awake. Like I don't have to get going in the morning. I'm ready to go right away in the morning. I need half your energy, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it goes. Like. I make sure that my body is good today yeah. so that it'll be good tomorrow. Good tomorrow. Yeah. If you don't take care of your body today, it's not ready tomorrow. And every day that you drag it out like yeah. that, it just gets worse and worse every day. So then how do you do it with the shows when you're just there for two days? And I, I take little stretch breaks. Yeah. Like, I bend all the way over, touch my toes, stretch my back out because your back's the first thing to go. Mm-hmm. I stretch my arms and my hands out over my head, behind the shoulder, like I make sure I stretch everything out because as soon as you get tight, your day's ruined. Yeah. And as soon as you start getting tight, you get more tired. As long as I can keep moving, I'm all right. <laughs> See, and that's the problem is, even though you're moving, you're consistent, but as soon as you start putting stretches in with that movement, yeah. like even if you're just walking around, just walk like this. I mean, I know you look silly, but. <laughs> if it makes me feel better, I don't yeah. care how I look. It's gonna save you, yeah. it's gonna save you in the long run. Exactly. All right, so next question is got to be all right what's been the highlight of your career highlight of my career was it the show hotel deal or was yeah because i mean that was that was like i said kind of the biggest thing where we got there and we had i had to do the truck all over again yeah so i jacked everything up um i had a friend with me i said i threw him up top to wax the top get the stacks done yeah um my dad actually had a run coming through he was clean, so we threw him inside, had him vacuum everything out, <laughs> and I was still finishing the outside. And before I even got it done, they came up and said, you heard about the calendar. I said, yeah, that's kind of why we're here. He says, well, do you own the truck? I said, no, actually, the owner of the truck was actually on a business thing in Orlando or something. So we had to have his dad come and drive, what was it, an hour and a half to come and show the truck because it had to be family-based. Yeah, it has to be family, yeah. So I called him, he's like, there's no way. I said... <laughs> Steve-O, I'm not even done with the truck yet, but they just asked me, he's like, you're serious? I said, yeah, I'm dead serious. need to get somebody here so now. So he needed to get here now, and luckily he got there because they told me one time, but they wanted it an hour early. Yeah. And they said if we weren't there in time, they were going to find someone else. Yeah. So I was like, I love the group of Shell Rotel. I've known those guys for a number of years now. Um, we've had really good luck. We had one year where we had eight out of the 12 trucks in the calendar really? that we had personally polished or detailed. 
and um, they're just such great people. Yeah. Like I've I've been around them for the better part of ten years now, maybe twelve years, and uh, we've been to their actual show the last. I think the only one I missed was Lehigh. But we the last twelve years we've been going, yeah. and we've been a part of the show. Um, I sponsored a few years. We polished across the street a few years. Like they sell their lot to polishers. Last yep. year was the first time they didn't sell the lot to a polisher. Really? Yeah. Um, so it's been cool. Like we've had a lot of fun with Shell Rotel. Well, and the cool thing is, it's actually in a truck stop. Like, and not even not even just that it's in a truck stop, but it's about the working trucks. Yes. Like yes, some show trucks have gotten in over the years. Yep. But the guys that work hard and put in the miles and the trucks have stone chips, they have just as fair a chance mm -hmm. as the guy that comes in fresh out of paint, yep. fresh looking right. That's the part that I enjoy, is that the working truck guys have a chance. And not only that, but some of them are loaded there for Monday. Yeah, Monday <laughs> right. Like, or some of them have to leave before the yeah. show's even over. Yep. I mean, I saw a guy win a few years back that he had to leave his wife and kids there to just get the trophy for him because he had to haul load. Yeah. Like, he had to haul the load before the trophy ceremony. That's what I, I have a lot of respect for those guys because yep. not only that, they're in it all week. Yep. When they come home, they got to wash. they got to do something to yep. get the grime off. Of I them. have respect for all truckers. I Well, yeah, I do too. But I, mean, I have a show, different respect yeah. for the guys that work versus the guys that have a show truck. Like yep. If you have the money to build something like that, I, I have the same respect. It's just a different type of respect yes. for those. Yes. I feel yep. like that's probably the fairest way to put yeah, it. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, like I said, Truck drivers are well. There's the reason that we get, I get the products from you, yep. and they bring it to me. Yep. So without them, there's no way any of us would have anything. Exactly. Food, clothes, exactly. Anything. So I mean, that's just the way it is. It, they're very not respected enough. So Shell Shell Rotel beats out Dallas. <sighs> or is it pretty close? One two. It's close. The one thing I can say is Clinton just. I mean, I, they treat me like family. And yeah. Honestly, Kunkels do too. So I'm not saying. Anything between the two, but so it's a close one. It's too. very close one yeah. too. Very close. I would say honestly, Dallas might have it one leg up. Gage wasn't able to be there. Yeah. And Gage was there from day one. Yeah. The very first job I ever did, he was there with me. Yeah. So that meant a lot more. And I, the last time I talked to TJ, he was just pulling into Dallas, wondering where you were to see what he needed to do because <laughs> yeah. I wasn't able to make it. And honestly, getting to meet TJ, he was such a nice guy. Yeah. And like. I, I tried to help him as much as possible, but like we had... Oh, I know. You had 15, didn't you? Well, we had seven or eight that we were doing full details on, yeah. but we had 15 that we were maintaining. Yeah. So it was like I got a, a solid conversation in with TJ right away. Like, these are the things that you should do like right now yep. and get ready. And then I'll come back. I'll check everything over. I'll give you another few pointers and I'll keep moving you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And he just soaked up everything I told him and just did as much as he possibly yep. could. And he was super nice and super thankful and grateful for all that. And it works out great for me. Like, I felt bad that we couldn't help him out. I had other guys in his class, and that's always a conflict oh, of interest. Yeah. But oh, yeah. it is what it is. I, I still enjoy being able to help people out and trying to do better at the shows. Because I want to see everybody compete at a high level. Like, I want to win because we won mm -hmm. not because it got given because yep. of who the person is or like i want the truck to win because it was right yeah and that's what we shoot for with the guys that we physically maintain in detail mm -hmm. at the shows is we go for that 200 mm percent -hmm. and we want everybody to be 100 percent but we want our guys to be 200 you gotta why be a 10 when you can be an 11 <laughs> exactly yeah and you're setting the new 10 and pushing somebody to nine is what you're doing yeah, exactly and that's what we that's what we try to shoot yeah. for. But I think it's cool that you're what'd you say, three years in, two years in? Gonna be three, yeah. Gonna be three years in. And you've got some big things under your belt already. I mean you got a, a big win at Dallas. Yep. A big win at Shell Rotel. Like got a couple of guys I mean they didn't make the four ten cover, but they were in it. I mean just like I said, and even seeing guys roll down the highway, no one did that truck. I got a feeling like so I can say this with some level of confidence. A truck you do at some point in time is going to get a 10-4 cover. Like you do some pretty big rides, and one of those guys is eventually going to get on a cover. It'll either be 10-4 or it'll be large car. Like one of those two guys is eventually going to pick up one of your trucks and put it on a cover. So uh, that's what give I it some time. For. You're two years. Yeah, I know. You get just, it. <laughs> I hate. I don't like walking. I want to run. I mean. Yeah. But with this. I mean, 
I'm like a runner. This gonna, well, yeah, but you're still learning stuff too every day. Yeah, that's exactly it. Have you been it. doing this for what, 20 plus years? Uh, this year, this year in June was 20 years. Yeah. So yeah. that to me is like, all right, pull the reins back a little yeah. bit. Like, <laughs> yeah. get get your stuff right first. Yeah. And then, well, that's what I mean is like, I feel like the industry has a lot better um, things to look at, like. Yep. YouTube is a bigger thing now. There's a, a bunch of polishers putting out quality content on YouTube. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of polishers putting out quality content on Instagram, Facebook, even TikTok is yeah. getting like quality yeah. polisher content. So like a lot of metal polishers now have access to metal polishing groups. Like yep. I don't, I'm not in any of the metal polishing groups on Facebook. I don't want to be a part of the metal polishing groups on Facebook. Not because I don't want to give out content mm -hmm. because you know, I put out a ton of content. Oh, yeah. I just feel like the metal polishing groups, and I mean no disrespect to the admins that run these groups, but it's a sack swinging competition. Yeah. Nobody, I don't see many people in a metal polishing group helping other people in a metal polishing group. No, there's it's a, a lot, lot of, of bashing and smashing yeah. and I'm better than you, you're yeah. not as good as me. I don't see any benefit in that. I'm in one on Facebook and people, they won't even, they won't even have a, a caption with it. They'll just throw it on there. And what the actually what people say back is actually better than it is worse. So it's actually cool. I mean, there it could be anybody that's following. They're all polishers. Sure. But they can throw. There was one guy just the other day. He did a tank, and he said, "I've never had the clarity like this." And everybody was telling him, "Congratulations, looks great." Um, there was one guy that was said, "If you want some tips or something like that, message me directly." not See, over this so that was kind of cool that's what i mean at least there's finally some access yeah like when i started off there was nobody i was gonna say no one wants to give away I like mean, there there was like two or three guys on youtube and if you watch their videos like they weren't how to's mm -hmm. they were watch me do it yeah. and figure it out yeah it was yeah. like you i had no idea what pressure i had no idea what speed they were using i had yeah. no idea what compounds they were using it was this is me i have this buff and this color you yeah. don't know what brand which meant nothing yeah. if you don't know what brand it is. Trial and error is all it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I still have a, I'm still going to have that. I mean... Yeah, no, 100%. I still gonna... feel like I'm 20 years in and learned this whole time. And you're two years in. Yeah. And you've got a great start. You've got a better starting point than I did. And I don't want to say I'm jealous of new polishers, but I kind of am. Because you guys have a lot more outlets to find good yeah. information. Well, thanks to you. I mean, that's... Wow. No, seriously, because all of your videos, I bet I've watched them all like five times. <laughs> and every single time I pick something else up, it's like, oh, man, maybe I should have done it that way instead. Yeah. Or you'll see even just your cup batter was just a little different that time. Or, I don't know, you can kind of see how you're holding the grinder differently. Like, maybe you're putting more pressure on your thumb, just a little bit more pressure on your yep. thumb. We'll put more pressure on the piece. So that's one of the things I haven't really touched on in my YouTube videos yet is I do show you the way I do it but <laughs> yeah there's there's more the, to it the big but is it's an art form so yeah. on a tank if it is a little rougher I'll adjust my angle five to ten degrees so that so the cuts harder mm -hmm. like and that's one thing I haven't touched on in the YouTube videos yet and I definitely need to at some point in time is do a video on that but it's hard to pick up some of that stuff on camera like if I change the angle five or ten degrees, like it's gonna cut harder. Yeah. But at the same time, like your reflection is gonna be different though too with the sun too. Well, not not if you color the same. Okay. So yes, your if your cut changes five or ten degrees, I'm not talking forty five. Yeah. I'm talking five or ten. Like okay. five or ten is here versus here. Okay. I mean, you're only talking five or ten degrees. Yeah. So you can still straighten your hash marks up with your color. Okay. So five or ten doesn't really it's not going to change the clarity until you get I say 35 degrees is where it finally starts changing good luck figuring that out when you're on a tank 35 45 like <laughs> it's it's a very distinct line when yeah. you get past that 35 you will know right away that you've cut it too sharp yeah. <laughs> like it'll change it'll change the color while you're doing it it's weird hmm. but 35 degrees is about that okay. that angle. So five or 10 degrees change just cuts a little harder so that when you go to color, it's got a little bit sharper edge to pull on. Okay. So it's one thing I need to touch on, but videoing it, I've tried it a few times, it doesn't thing. show up on video. Yeah. 
like camera hides some of the stuff, especially on quality video like 4K. Yeah. It's gone. You can't see it. Well, and like you said on your last, po- or your very first podcast, was that with Casey or? Uh, Ke- or uh, Zach. Zach. Yep. So you said that, that he came in, was that in Tulsa? Yeah. And that was the first was, time we actually hung out. Those wheels looked together. awesome. Yeah. And he said, oh, he told me, oh, I can teach you that in like 10 minutes. Yeah. Like, it's crazy what you can see on camera. Yeah. And what you can actually see in the I, I always tell people, like, people will send me questions, and they'll ask me, like, what did I do wrong? And I always joke around. Call Stevie Wonder and have him ask, <laughs> tell you what color your shirt is. Like, yeah. it, it just blows my mind. Like, there's so many different factors to what could have possibly gone wrong. And even then, metal polishing, you've never done it wrong. It's just incomplete. Yeah. Like, if you've made it shiny, you've done something. So you're polishing metal. Mm-hmm. Just it's incomplete if it's not done. Yeah. You haven't me- you haven't wrecked it. You haven't done anything wrong. You're just incomplete. Sometimes you have to sand it to make it complete. Yeah. Because you did something. The sad thing not is, correct. I'm pretty sure I was probably one of those that called you and asked <laughs> you. And that's fine. <laughs> but like I've had people send me videos too, that they were trying to figure out what they did wrong. And I'm yeah. like, just send me a video of you cutting something so that I can like hear it and kind of see it. Mm-hmm. And then I hear it and I see it and I watch it and I'm like, I, I still don't know. Like your pattern looks good. And then they've come here and done a training course. And within two minutes, I'm like, ah, it's a pressure problem. Like you can't hear it through the microphone yeah. on your phone when they're videoing it. Yeah. But when I have it here in my shop yeah. on my training tank, I'm like, oh, that's a pressure issue. Like your pattern is perfect, yeah. but your pressure isn't compensating for the pattern. Like your pressure's too light for how wide your pattern is. Yeah, that's that's a one big thing that I know I need to figure out is pressure. Yeah, I mean, especially after sanding it, or a lot of the guys now, I don't have to sand as much. Mm-hmm. It's just a cut and a color, depending on if I. Well, some of the stuff, like especially for the show coming up, there's a lot of guys that are. They, it looks great, so I won't go all the way to orange. I'll use the yellow and brown. Yeah, yellow and brown. 100%. And then so, it, which it makes a huge difference in your cut, clarity. Yeah, huge difference for sure. So. But, yeah, it just, yeah, I know for a fact I was one of those guys that uh, called you and asked you what I did wrong or what I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. I try to give everybody as much of my attention as I possibly can. Yeah. The people that get mad and don't understand, I ask them just to come spend a day with me and just see how hectic my day is here. Like, <laughs> polishing yeah. a truck, answering the phone, returning emails, returning DMs on Instagram, Facebook, email, like I throw my phone out the window, but then dude. <laughs> it's it's gotten to be a lot. Like I could use a social media manager. Like <laughs> I wish I got paid for my social media stuff yeah. because I need somebody here just to maintain my social media. Like it's gotten to that point that eventually I would like to hire somebody in just to not do automated responses, but like the people that just want to have a conversation, mm-hmm. just to have a conversation with them. Yeah. And then the people that have questions to filter that to me and go, all right, this is something you need to address, address and yeah. you need to have a solution oh, yeah. for me. And a lot of it's simple fixes. A lot of it's like, yes, here's the product that we have on the website. A lot of people just want to know what product to use. And my sister handles a lot of that stuff. I mean, you've yeah. had conversations yeah, with oh, her. Yeah. She's very knowledgeable in that department. Oh yeah, very good. Um, but that's. That's helped out quite a bit, having her here. She knows a lot of the product and yeah. knows her way around. Um, I need to get her out and just make her buff something sooner or later so that it makes sense, but I don't yeah, want to do that to her either. I think it'd be awesome. <laughs> I want to be here to see that. My wife has worked for me for a number of years, and she grabbed a grinder one day and tried buffing something, and God bless her soul, <laughs> she tried. She tried. Yeah, my dad came and helped me before Louisville, before it got canceled. We were working on that hopper, and oh my gosh, I was there for a week straight. I slept in my truck whenever I got time to sleep. <laughs> yep. And he came, and he was there for two hours. We were doing the inside of the tubs, and he had the big grinder, and I was following behind him with the smaller one, and oh, he said, I'm done. Yeah, I mean, he just your arms just get yeah. blown out. Your yeah. shoulders, too. I mean, my wife can hand polish like nobody else. I mean... Cool. She's one of the best hand polishers, a chaser. I hate hand polishing, trying to blend stuff. That's what we all do, but she's oh. really good at it. I mean, you got the eye for detail for it. She's very good at it. See, and I think that does more to your hands than anything. Oh, I yeah. Mean. She always complains. She's like, my hands are sore. I'm like, well, you only do it once or twice a year. Yeah. So it's like, 
to yeah. get out there a little more. Well, get, if you do it every day, yeah. eventually your hands just, that muscle memory shows yep. up and yeah, eventually you probably end up with carpal tunnel, but it just is what it is. That's all right. <laughs> Whatever, don't, don't kill you, makes you stronger. That's right. So all right, next one is, what's the biggest thing you got burnt on that you thought was going to be easy, but turned out to be super difficult? Um, it was definitely two things. First one was a hopper for Louisville. Oh yeah, hoppers are the worst. I always want to do one, and everybody I know gets burnt on a hopper. I'm gonna regret saying this, but I want to do a cattle pot sometime. Listen, I do too, but I want to be able to get paid for it. Like yeah. everybody that's ever hit me yeah. up, I bid it at twelve thousand because I know it's going to take me seven days mm -hmm. with a crew of five guys to yep. do it the way I want to do it. I want and to do be it right. Part of one of those guys. <laughs> I mean, Listen, if I get one and somebody calls me and says, yeah, 12000 do it. I'm calling you because I need okay. help. <laughs> All right, deal. I, I will do it because, I mean, I saw, I saw one video and it was unbelievable. I mean, I've seen a few of them. I mean, um, Phil Miller. Yep, he had one. He, his polished was cool. Um, PDI. Um, yep. What is their parent company? The cattle company. Um, the guy that owns PDI owns a farm. I know which one you're talking Anyways, about. Anyways, Little Sisters yeah. polished that thing like three or four times, and that thing was glass. Yeah. I mean, anytime that. you get a chance to polish something that many times, it's yeah. like, I want to cut the rails off, like pop the rivets out of it, yep. pull the rails off, do it right, put the rails back on when we're done. Like, yep. I want to go crazy with one. I would love to do it. I just want to say that I did it. Yeah, me too. I mean, and then never do one again. Yeah, never do one again. I mean, it's gonna suck. <laughs> like but, I've done thirty airstreams. I don't ever want to do another one ever. Yeah, that was one thing I denied. I, there was no way I wouldn't know where Listen, to start. Listen, you don't want to do it. I'm telling you, <sighs> like, I, I will never do another one again. Even if I bought one myself, I wouldn't <laughs> do it for my own. Like, well, I started looking on YouTube. They got a machine that you can actually use for them. Like Those it, buff pros? Yeah, it takes like a foot or foot and a half at a time. I was like, that looks good, but pictures are deceiving. I was going to say, I've, a I've seen stuff. a few of them in person and nothing against the buff pros, but everybody they know that bought a buff pro, it's sitting on a shelf. Really? Like, they just don't use it anymore. Oh, it's like an orbital, it's like a rotary wool pad. Yeah. Like, yep. we all know what that looks like. Yeah. Like, it looks good going down the road, mm -hmm. but if I'm going to set it in a museum somewhere. I was like, going to say, I don't want a 50 foot truck. I mean, I want one that you can come up and. I've asked those really guys to come here to my shop a number of times. They come to Oshkosh for the EAA every oh, year really? to display for doing planes and stuff. And I've asked those guys to stop by. I, I'm, I have been interested in that Buff Pro. I would like to check one out and like to try one. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spend six or eight hundred dollars, whatever yeah, it is, to buy one is, yeah. for something that's going to sit on the shelf. Like, and the, I don't even know if all your if the compound or anything comes with. It. I think you got to buy that separate too. Well, see, I know the compound companies, so that's not an issue for me. Um, like most of them use Nuvite and stuff like that, yep. so like I have easy access to that. Um, just. I don't want to buy a six, not another six hundred dollar machine that just sits on my shelf. Like I've got plenty of six hundred dollar machines that are sitting on my shelf that I'll never use again. Yeah. Like I've bought gimmicks in the past and got burnt on them, and I haven't seen a whole lot of material come out of them lately. So I don't know if they've kind of like. I don't know. I saw off. it. I saw it once, and then I got guys that know I polish and they tag me and all this stuff all the time. And I only saw it once. Other than yeah. that, it was the... They did a bunch of, like, Facebook and Instagram ads for yes. quite a while. Yep, yep. And I know a bunch of big polishers that bought them. Uh, Jared's Polishing had one for a while. Um, but last I talked to him, it was just sitting on a shelf. Yeah. So, like, I, I don't know. I thought about calling him and asking him if he had any interest in selling it cheap, but anything well, from the East Coast comes expensive. You might have saved me a headache there, so I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah. I mean, for, for doing paint and stuff, I bet it's a great tool for, like, doing bolts and stuff because you can do paint in a big section yeah. then, but um, for doing metal, I just, I'm not a big fan of rotary stuff on metal, like, especially a wool pad. Like, I, I know what the wool does to metal. Mm. So, like, yes, you can get a decent finish out of it. I just don't feel like it's going to get the finish I want. I was just going to say, you can always get a better finish. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I just, I don't know. I feel like that's just where I'm stuck at. And that's just me personally. It's just my own opinion. I don't push that opinion on anybody else. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of polishers on the West Coast that are using those Buff Pros yep. doing Airstreams and stuff. I feel like they're turning out good work. Their customers are happy. They're happy. That's so the main thing. If their customers are happy, I mean. Yeah, why, exactly. Why, yeah. No, between the hopper and then I did the back end of a cattle pot. Yeah. That's a lot of flat. Yeah. <laughs> that is a lot of flat. Especially when you do the inlays. Like, you did the inlays, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, see, I don't do many inlays. I do 
posts, and we can get posts done in like two hours. It was for another couple truck, and while well, TJ's was painted, yeah. so he didn't want to copy him, yeah. so it was the was white bottom top flat and, bottom. and thin. Yeah. And they suck. Yeah. There's a special pattern. I did it one time because I knew there was a show coming up the week after, and I didn't want to do it then. Yeah. So I did it I did it that time, and then the week, the next week he came back and did it again. So... Yeah, if you can do I mean, them, like split them up and just yep. like break it up and let the polish settle in a little bit. That's one thing I don't touch on in YouTube either, is that like when I get a nasty truck, I don't take it from zero to hero in one shot. Yeah. Like I, I educate my customers like shiny pits now mm -hmm. is good and let me work it in. Let's do a couple polishes yep. this year, a couple polishes next year. I'll keep my price down so that we're not blowing a fortune exactly. on it this time. The more polishes I can get into it, we can get away from the dry aluminum, start yeah. getting some moisture back into it. It's going to look great mm -hmm. next year. Yep. If you're planning on showing it this year, that's a different story. Yeah, then you just got to take it all in one shot. Yeah, you, you don't have a choice. No. And even then, like, if somebody tells me they're going to show the, the three big shows, Louisville, Shell Rotel, and Dallas, mm -hmm. there are other great shows out there as well. But those are my three big those ones big that people ones, care yeah. about the most. So if somebody tells me that that's what they're gonna do, like I tell you, bring me the truck in January, I will do as much as I can. Bring me the truck in February, I'll do as much as I can. Bring it again in March, it'll be ready for Louisville. Let me get it three times and you'll be ready for the show season. And it will maintain it through the year. Yeah. Because if I do it just in March, right before Louisville, it's not gonna be right. See, I need, I need to do more something like that. Yeah. Because for Louisville, I started at the end of February. And just muscled out an entire month. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's what I mean. Is it? That, it burns you out because you're working on the same thing. Not only that, but it's like, I don't know. I like, I like being able to walk away from something. Yep. For a little bit, and then come back. It's like you're starting fresh. Yep. And it just kind of clears your mind and everything. But well, when you're working on it day in and day out, you start yeah. overlooking stuff, and it's like. I should probably do that, but I don't want to. But I'm gonna end up doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah. I did a lot of that. It's one of those things that helped me in my career. Yeah. I, I, I really hope it's something that you can take from here and go. This makes more sense, especially well, when you do more show stuff. And it helped that Clinton was there helping me do it too. I mean, he is the most particular and anal guy you'll ever meet. Which I don't know. I got some guys. That are, <laughs> that are I'll put I'll put Clinton up to anybody, <laughs> but and I love him for it just because. Those are no some one, of my favorite guys. I was going to say because I know when I go to their place, it's clean, it's washed, yeah. it's ready to go. Yeah, and, and it keeps you on your toes too. Yeah, it does. It does. But it also not only that. That thing going down the road is going to make it just looks awesome anyway. Oh yeah, I mean, and then you're going to maintain it in between, so exactly. that helps out too. Exactly, makes just makes your business look that much better. Yes, and he loves the product, especially your products because they're easy. He doesn't want to spend a whole lot of time. He doesn't want to end up like me having to scrub a second layer of skin off <laughs> when he's done with it. So yeah, I hear that. Yeah. So this is going to bring me to the most important part. Oh. So you've only been doing this two years. Yep. I'm going to open this table to you so okay you sure you want to do that listen as long as it's not politics or religion no you're, 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 you're good i mean you're good with that i mean I, I feel like we probably are on the same page in both politics and religion oh yeah but oh, yeah. nonetheless i want to keep my blood pressure down <laughs> yeah I, i'm very firm in my beliefs and i don't like arguing with people no, i care about no no <laughs> so the biggest thing is like i just got done talking when you get done at the end of the day yep are you cleaning yourself off during the day to get clean no. in the end? What do you use? I mean, I wash my hands before I eat and stuff well, like yeah, that. Yeah, but like, how do you get it all off? Because I, when I come out of the shower, I'm look in the mirror. It's like <sighs> still the back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I use lava and suave men's care, the three in one. It's in the shampoo aisle. Okay. Um, I use lava on my arms, my neck, my chest my legs and my feet because those are the main areas that get super covered mm -hmm. right so i use the lava first to get all the heavy stuff off the bar of lava um i use that to get it all off i wish they'd sponsor me by the way if lava if you're listening i could use a sponsor in that department we go through a ton of it um, not even buy it so there you go <laughs> you got a customer right here. so i scrub all of that and then once I have that done, I have a, a mirror in the shower, so I make sure that those areas are clean. And always this area yeah. is the hardest to make. The one that you walk out and like you come in here and put the other on, it's like, oh man, I gotta yeah. rewash that. Yeah. So I use the lava on everything I can get okay. by hand. Once I'm done with that, I rinse it off. 
Then I grab the Suave uh, Men's Care 3 in 1 hair, face, and body because um, it doesn't burn your eyes. And it, I don't know what they have in it. I'd use a sponsorship for them too if they're, if they're offering. We're just going for a whole bunch of sponsors but, today, so just <laughs> listen up. <laughs> so I do my hair first and my face at the same time. So I do my hair and face because it's going to run down you. You're going to have. When you're standing in the shower, you know this, when you wash your hair in your face, like you have streaks of dirt down yeah. you again. Yeah. So I, I take all the heavy stuff off. I'll start washing here and then it runs down. Then call me a girl. I use a loofah. Like I don't use a washcloth. I feel like the washcloth doesn't do what a loofah does. I would agree with that. So get the Axe Men's mm -hmm. loofah or the girly loofahs. Like I don't even care. Like people see me, Zach gives me the beans all the time he's like what are you girl i'm like listen i'm clean you're still dirty so well, see the way i see it is do you want to wipe your butt with charmin ultra soft <laughs> or do you want to use single like, ply the, yeah, <laughs> yeah the ones you get out of walmart or menards or something yeah exactly yeah. yeah so then i use the loofah with the same suave men's care whatever's in it it literally eats all the <laughs> leftover compound off like it melts off it comes off super easy i can be full dirty like the blackest you've ever seen me mm -hmm. to full clean in 10 minutes now i also have soft water really soft water helps i also lotion up in the morning before i yeah, work i do that i do that. um and i can be full clean in 10 minutes like it's it's a huh. i've been doing it 20 years so i have yeah. a fine-tuned process on how i do it i always forget that little spot in my ears oh, but yeah. Yeah. even when you wash it seems like it's still there like and then if you sneeze and yeah, it's black everywhere. Too. Yeah, that <laughs> That's just how it goes. It doesn't work. But yet. I can be full clean in in ten minutes and nothing left over. Huh. All right. Well, I'm gonna try that. I'm telling you, it works awesome. Kay. Everybody I've turned on to it hits me up and is like, "Dude, I can't believe that worked." Like, well, Gage, if you're watching this, listen to this guy because he comes out worse than I am, and I don't know why. If he's if he's got his face or his head in a different position than I do or what, but I could do like six wheels and he'll come out look like he just did two days worth of really? a truck. Yeah. Zach and Parker, like they swear by Dawn dish soap and you know I am an advocate for not using Dawn dish soap. Like Dawn, I'm sorry if you guys are listening, I'm terribly sorry, but Dawn just dries your skin out. Yeah. And it yeah. makes you more susceptible to aluminum dust tomorrow. Yep. Like, and that's what people don't realize is, yes, it cleans you very well, but I look at Zach and Parker and their arms are still filthy. Mm -hmm. They've still got dirt on the back of their neck. Like, yes, Dawn got you clean, but it didn't get you as clean as you could have been. Yeah. Like, it does it pretty quick, too. But it's doing damage to your skin. I, like, I'll use it on my hands, like, before I eat something, like you said. Sure. Other than that, nah, I, yeah. I do something different. Yeah. Something totally different. Yeah. So... All right, next question. <laughs> All right, so when you go to a show, yep. how long would it take you and how many steps? Like if you're going to do one wheel, would you take it off and use the gem machine or would you take it and just do it with the buffer? Um, and how many steps? You don't have to tell me what are, what are we What are we like, talking about? Are we talking like one, say, of, one of these yeah, trucks so, here? Okay, use Foolish Habit for example. Okay, so Foolish Habit, um, we've actually never run those wheels on a machine. Corey, if you're listening, I would love to have that truck here in my shop for a day just to run them on the machine and get them to where I want them to be. Um, his wheels are great, but they could be phenomenal getting them on the machine one time. Like, hmm. they are top of his class right now and I mean no disrespect to anybody else on the show circuit but I feel like Corey's wheels are the top of his class I would 100% agree with that that truck alone but just looks awesome if I threw them on my wheel machine one time I could get them just one tweak better like I know it's hard to explain through a podcast but if I set a wheel that I did with a grinder next to a wheel that I pulled off the wheel machine at his level, like a nice wheel that we threw on the wheel machine, like if I set those two next to each other, you'd be like, why aren't you pulling everything off and throwing it on the wheel machine? <laughs> like, they just come out that crisp. And especially when you give them time to cure before a show, like if you throw them on the wheel machine, get them glossy, and then just hit them with a buffer real quick before a show, mm -hmm. they just look like they're dipped in chrome. Really? So if I had the opportunity to do it here at the shop, throw them on my wheel machine, clock the tires where I want them, all that stuff, mm -hmm. and then get to the show and just touch them up, yes, 100%.
But if I'm at a show or the guy can't get to my shop, mm -hmm. I don't pull him off. No, you don't, you don't have time. Yeah. So I, I have to do them with a grinder, you know. So um, I can get them good with a grinder. There's, it all depends on the condition of the wheel coming in. So the condition of the wheel dictates what steps I have to do. Okay. So like if the wheel is decent already, I'm only going to do two steps, yellow with brown and white with green. There is a special brown and there is a special green that we use. Oh. <laughs> um, we, you're the probably the first person in uh, the podcast who's going to be hearing this, other than my franchise guys. Um, we're developing our own show compounds. So it's going to be the compounds that we've been using for years. Okay. Um, tweaked. Of course, you guys, most of you guys know we developed our own bars and we've switched to our, yep. our own company. Yep. Um, not the company we were with in the past. So we are developing a show brown and a show green, which will be accessible to the public through our website. Um, you know, when you go to goshannon.com slash shop, it's got all the tabs yep. for metal polishing, uh, st stainless polishing, detailing, all the different yeah, tabs. Yeah, starter up kits. You know, yeah. So, yeah, the startup kits and yep. stuff too. There will be a show polish tab. Okay. It will just have soft buffs like yellows, um, whites. It'll also have the new browns, the new greens. It'll be its own tab because I don't want people, I don't want just general people buying this. And I, I that sounds bad. But at the same time, if you're buying show compounds because you want to get a show finish out of something that's rough, it's not going to happen. No. I want people to have to find this tab because if you have a show truck and you want to make it nice, or you have a truck that's really nice already and mm -hmm. you just want to make it that one step better, that's what these compounds are going to be for. Like, I can't take a show compound and put it on a rough wheel. Because it's not going to do anything. No. There's no cutting. Of, You're going to no make reason. it worse. You're going to make it worse. Yeah. You're going to turn it black. Yeah, it's going to turn it's... crappy. <laughs> and I tell people, even with the coloring process, like I get pictures all the time from people that are like, why is my coloring process turning black? Because the wheel's not smooth enough to yeah. to color it yeah, or the yeah. tank's not smooth yeah. enough to color it. Like, cut will work on almost anything. You could cut through just about anything unless the wheel is white. And pitted and rough and, yeah, like... <laughs> Color's yeah. picky. Yeah. Like, if your wheel's in tanks aren't smooth color is not going to do a whole lot your yeah i would 100 percent agree with that because when i first got your your new your stuff that you came out with your color yeah i could see little black lines everywhere. so actually you got the show green you got our show green that we've been developing oh, man. <laughs> so that's why it was a little pickier we now have developed a, a green for the general public well it was good for me because i went back and i redid it yeah to where i didn't have those yeah so that so green, it made me better so i appreciate it. so that green is actually going to be part of the show okay. process at okay. some point in time um we do have a, a standard green that's a little more forgiving yeah. for the general public that yeah. will work through pitted stuff okay. so yeah you, you engage were one of the guys that i told alan just send it out like yeah. He's going to complain about black spots. I'll deal with that when he starts complaining about it. <laughs> Did I complain about and it, you, though? You didn't. You, uh, I just found out now that you had the black spots, and you yeah. didn't even say anything. No, I just... I, I assumed you did. Well, see, that's my thing. It's like... Well, you're not a complainer, either, so that I'm helps. trying. I'm trying not to, like, bank on, oh, this didn't work, I'm going to call Evan. I yeah. want to be able to figure it out on my own, too. And I appreciate I mean, that, for what it's worth. Like, I mean, I was... I don't know, I just... It was one of those to... things, like, I had hoped you'd called, just so that I could be like, ah, perfect, that's what I wanted to hear. But now hearing it, I'm like, yeah, see, I'm yeah, still getting no, the feedback I, I wanted. I definitely had those black spots. It drove me nuts, and then we were working on the hopper when that happened. Yep. And I was not going to call you, because Our regular probably... green will be a lot more forgiving on, like, hoppers and stuff. Okay. Whereas, like, that show green that you used... Okay. It, it's... For show stuff. I mean, you can use it on regular stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. And it does leave an awesome color. It does. Like, it is a deep, deep clarity color, and I love it. Yeah. My wheels, I've never compared to what you had to what you have now. Yeah. There's, there, It's just a day and night. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge, huge difference. That's what we wanted, is we wanted to still appeal to everybody. Yep. I mean, we, we want to be able to sell to the general public. We want to be able to sell to the top detailers and polishers in the industry. Um, so we wanted a quality product, but we wanted a quality product that was 
scalable for everybody. Like an average consumer can still use it. Exactly, and it still has that chrome look to it, but it's also got that deep clarity. Too. Yep, and so it's a two in one. We are a little pricier for the market, but that's just because of the qualities that we're trying to maintain. <laughs> like I told, I told all my chemists, if you ever feel like you have to water something down, call me. I would much rather raise my price. And if I lose a few customers because we raised our price because we kept our quality, I would rather do that yeah. because I don't ever want to lose the quality that we're at right now. Well, and I, would, I always want to just be a little better than where we're at now. Now is the base where we're starting. And if we get better, we get better. And if yeah. the price has to go up a little bit, I feel like the consumer is a lot more accepting to a price hike because the quality had to stay versus keeping the price the same and watering it down. Well, I think I'm speaking for other guys too, but... I would, I will gladly pay for quality. Yeah. Any, and then, any day of the week. I was always the same way too. Like I would rather pay for quality because I know my customer is getting that quality in return. I mean, it, it's all about the customer in the end. If they're happy, I'm happy. But it's always nice when they're happy and I'm, I'm happy too. Yeah. I mean, because then you know exactly. Well, I mean, I get customers that some guys are darn near the same. Yep. And if he's happy, I know I can make this guy happy. And if this guy's happy, I can make this guy happy. Yep. So if I can make one guy happy i'm usually making more than just one you're making 10 exactly their, their whole group of friends exactly. are gonna be happy yeah so i have when it comes to that i have no problem with that just because well not only that but i know that you're not going to go put something out there that you're not happy with either yeah and i feel like now that we have creative control of all of our own products and our actual chemists yeah. and supply chain now that we have full creative control i can make sure it's at the level that i want it all the time and maybe the level I want isn't perfect for anybody else, but I know what I'm putting out is what I can make work. Mm -hmm. And if I have to walk somebody through it, I can help them make it work. Exactly. So exactly. it's been working out pretty good for us so far. So We've had a really good feedback. You're going to put brown. You're going to put green. Where's purple at? <sighs> Dude, I love the purple. I know I you do. I, if there's somebody out there, please comment below. And <laughs> Make make it so I'm not the only one out there that loves purple. <laughs> well, we have that purple. new we have that new purple. Yeah, and, and I actually, got some. you tested it. Like you got bars before anybody else did. Ooh, I I take that back. You did. You got it in the same batch that my franchises did. Okay. So you tested it at the same time my franchises did, and I sent it to you because you've been good feedback for us, and you've been a big advocate for the purple bar. Now, a bunch of my franchises don't use purple. I don't use purple at all in my shop. I don't use it at all. I don't use really? blue. I don't use purple. I don't use blue. I don't use any of the, the industry standard show bars. Green is where I stop on literally everything. Yeah. Like, if you've seen any of my stuff at a show, it's never had white, blue, or purple on it. Really? With the rare occasion, Keenan used some purple on some stainless a time or two, but only on stainless. Okay. We've, we've tried it on aluminum. I still feel like the green leaves a better finish, especially underneath the LED lights at the shows and stuff. Yeah. But you guys were physically testing it before we released it to the general public. I mean, your guys' feedback, I sent you two different bars. Yeah. You tested both and you were yeah. like, they're both great. Yeah. So. Because <laughs> that hopper. And Clinton, you gotta listen to this kid. He doesn't even use purple, man. Come on, give me a little break. <laughs> but it, I can't get out of his shop without finishing it with purple. And he honestly, absolutely loves it. I will tell you what the purple is. The purple is a lot of wax. Okay. So it like just kind of smooths over those last bits of imperfections. So that like it eliminates a little bit of the extra hash. Mm -hmm. So it just lays a ton of wax on. It's like putting a finishing glaze on paint. Like, did it do a whole lot? No, it was a finishing glaze. It just glazed everything over. Yeah, yeah. So, I just find the purple is almost all wax. So after like three or four washes, it's gone anyways. So it was a wasted product for me, and it took extra time. So unless my customer was paying for the extra time, it was a wasted product. And even then, like if you did it before a show, it'd be good for the show, and by the time they wash it three, four weeks later, it's gone. Uh, I don't know if Clinton's gonna use that anymore. <laughs> Which well, is fine with me. I I just I don't know. I love the I love the way it ended up. No, it does. It gave it just a little bit, like kind of the, just a little extra notch. Yep. And it just made it pop. It, I and loved I, it. I'm not bashing on it at all because I sell quite a bit of it. Mm -hmm. I just don't personally use it because I just find most of my trucks that come in and out of my shop are fleet trucks. Yep. They just want a quick cut in color, get me back on the road so I can get back to work. So like 
we just bang everything out. We cut and color. Like I said, the truck in the shop today is going to take an hour and 15 minutes max. And I'm going to call him. He probably won't pick it up till later tonight. But <laughs> on, on a busy day, we get three or four trucks in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. We're just banging them out. So it's like I don't have time for purple. Purple's a lot slower process. Yeah. It does take a lot more time to lay that down right because it's a pickier product. Well, I shouldn't say pick here because it does lay down pretty easy. It but. does, but I mean, you got, well, first of all, you can't use a 6,000 on it. So you got to use a variable. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, no, I agree with that. But if you're going to do it in an hour and 10 minutes or hour and 15 minutes, I got to get to your level, man. <laughs> I mean, Honestly, I, just come up sometime and spend a day with us in the shop. Like I told Zach and Parker, or Zach in that first podcast was, I can teach it to you in 10 minutes. Like, it's just a process change. And once you see it, you're like, whoa, I should have been doing this the whole time. <laughs> like, and you don't have to do my process, just it's fast and efficient. Well, it's, that's the key. I mean, that's where you make your money. Yep. If it's fast and good quality work and people are happy, yep. I mean, everybody's happy. Yep. So Just how it is. Yeah. So my last question, and this is going to be for, I got a lot of hoppers I got to do. Yep. Those Better you than me. <sighs> <laughs> I like doing the rails. I hate doing the hoppers. Well, the hoppers I'm not worried about. I would rather do hoppers than the rails. Ooh, I would. Dude, those rivets, I don't know how to get those come clean. There is, there is like, you'll have, obviously I can get the, the excess rouge out there. Yep. But there's still a ring around that. Mm-hmm. That is the hardest thing for me to get out. And. This is my biggest secret. And I. Hey, I asked listen, you before. I told made, you I would, I told you I would give it. Uh, this is one I haven't given out because it's been like the one thing that's set us above everybody else for like the last, I don't know, six years. I want to say six years ago was when I developed this process. You want to tell me if you don't want No, to. listen, I will because I promised you I would. My cousin and I, um, Jason, if Jason's listening, um, him and I developed the process. He's not going to call you later and be like completely ticked off at you. No, nah, he's... He quit polishing completely. He works at a, okay. a a factory job now. Okay. He got a really good job with great benefits, okay. which we don't have in metal polishing. <laughs> but no, no, um, the benefits are you get to see shiny trucks all day. Yeah. You get to be around cool trucks. Yeah. But him and I sat here. Um, we had a belt trailer rail, and we sat and developed a process. It took us like six hours to develop this process. We just literally trial and error for six hours straight. And we've been using it on every belt trailer we do. I don't do it on reefer trailer rails just because reefer trailer rails are a different beast. I've never, I've never done one of those. But on hoppers and belt trailer rails, the rivets are bigger heads. So you have to have a separate process for that versus reefer trailer rails. Reefer trailer rails, the rivet heads are a lot smoother, mm -hmm. smaller, shallower. So you could just cut and cross cut and you're good on a reefer trailer rail. On a belt trailer, Hurts my soul a little bit to give this one, but I said I'd do it. I was gonna say I gave you a chance, man. No, I'm not gonna back out. I told you I would do it. So take your variable speed buffer. Okay. <laughs> yellow, yellow buff. Yeah. Brown compound. Yeah. 1400 RPM. What? <laughs> oh my God! What? I mean, I know. I know the slower you go, the more the bite, but. That just but seems like slow, slow, slow. It is. And do that just around the rivets before you cut the whole thing. Oh, okay. If you're doing a show trailer rail and you want to make it right, yellow buff, 1,400 RPM, just do around the rivets first. Okay. 1,400, and it's got to be a yellow buff. It can't be an orange buff because the yellow buff, it has to flex and a little bit of string has to get underneath that rivet. So that rivet sits up just yes. a hair yep. and the yellow fabric will fray just enough that it tucks underneath it and it'll completely eliminate that line. <laughs> I appreciate that. You know, like I've been holding on to that one for six years and I, I said at some point in time I would give that one away. That's just what works for me. Now I've, I haven't told more than like two people that. You're literally the third person and now all the people that listen to this podcast. You're welcome. Or watch it on YouTube. <laughs> but um, yeah, literally that's uh, that's the secret. Wow. Whether it works for anybody else, I have no idea. I know other guys that are doing it different ways. I've listened to some of those guys. I have never been able to make their ways work for me. 
That's the only way we could figure it out. In those six hours, we tried 50 different patterns. Really? To try and make that work. And it just didn't work. And all of a sudden, we were slowing it down and slowing it down. And we're like, oh, that ring's getting smaller and smaller. And eventually, we got down to 1400 RPM and the ring was gone. And I'm like, huh, let's try that with an orange buff. Maybe we can cut it a little deeper. No. Nah. No. Didn't work no. at all. The ring was right back. It was a yellow buff, brown compound, 1400 RPM. They just tucked it in underneath. And I was like, why 1400? I have no idea. And it takes a lot of time, too. Like, if you want that belt trailer reel to be perfect, yeah. like you're going to spend the better part of four to six hours just Absolutely. buffing rivets in that section. Absolutely. And then once you're done with that, you can cut it. And then when you go to color it with like a, a white and green or a white and purple, yeah. 1800 RPM and you're done. I mean, the white strings will get underneath there at 1800 RPM, super simple. Okay. That's good to know. That it's brutal. It is. Oh, it, it definitely <laughs> is, but I mean, I like the competition. I like the uh, just more of a more of a big sigh in the inside relief, knowing that well, I did that. If I can do that, I can do anything. Yeah. So. Yeah. And once you've done that that first really hard job, everything just kind of gets easier. So, well, not easier, but it just doesn't look. Now, we'll tell you the day you think everything's easy is the day aluminum polishing <laughs> kicks you in the nuts. Uh, and makes you start over and makes you rethink your I'll entire life. I'll do aluminum any day, but when it comes to stainless, I want to rip my teeth out. Oh, stainless is brutal because it's so time consuming. It takes forever. The process drags out literally forever. I have done one back of a reefer, and he's actually going to be going to the show with us next week. Yeah. And I asked him about the back of the trailer, and he said it still looks awesome. So that worked. That made the beauty of stainless awesome. is it looks nice for a long time. Yeah. And it only takes a little bit to maintain it. But that first time sanding it and getting it right? It was, yeah, brutal was right. Yeah. Was Want nuts. to rip your hair out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I had to have the entire truck done, the entire trailer wheels, the tank on the trailer. Everything was done. My last stainless horse collar took Ty and I 22 hours. Oh, well, no, I don't feel as bad because I mean, <laughs> mine, was, mine was about that. I mean, it took me an entire day. Yeah. And I was there we, until We morning. sand, well, yeah, we sanded it. In it was eight hours a piece. So that's 16, 16 man hours, and then I cut the horse collar. It took two hours, and then the bottom part I had to resand some of the stuff I did, and I made him resand it with me so he was mm -hmm. learning. Yep. And yeah, we resanded some stuff, and it took like another four hours to complete. So yeah, it was like twenty two man hours. And did you rotary sand that or DA? See, no, I I alternate. I rotary okay. and DA. So I rotary the first step, DA the next step, rotary the yeah. next step, ro DA. Yeah, Actually, I have a video on YouTube that is scheduled to release within the next couple of days here really? on the sanding steps that I do. Okay. And I put it on a whiteboard, wrote the numbers down, rotary DA, rotary DA, showed everybody the pattern that I use. Okay. So that video is going to be pretty interesting. So well, that hot, by that the time this podcast comes out, that video will already be out. Perfect. Because that rail that you guys did on that uh, flatbed, that yeah. was that had been the last one that I saw. Yeah. And that was, see, I never, I never followed with the DA ever. Yeah. I mean, I finished with the DA. Yeah. But I never followed. Most guys rotary until they get to their DA steps yeah. and then they finish out with the DA. Yeah. Um, I alternate between the two because I want to make sure the previous step is gone before I get yes. to the next one. See, and that's the thing. Like, I know. I think it was you and Ty had some pigtails in there. Uh -huh. Let me go back. Yep. I've done that multiple times. I didn't know what I was doing. Yep. I let up on pressure, especially with the with the stainless. I used the WD forty on yep. it. It's, I mean, that helps, helps a, a lot. lot. A lot, big time. It, it does. I mean, it's oily in the end, but it looks awesome. You can use carb cleaner to clean the oil off. Okay. I mean, it comes off super easy. See, I, at the end of that, I was so so happy to be done with it. <laughs> I didn't want to touch it again. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I did. I was nervous about that, but no, stainless is still my kryptonite. I'm still gonna honestly stainless is for most polishers. Most polishers won't even touch stainless. So I, the only, the first thing I did was would be the air cleaners. Air cleaners are. I feel like air cleaners are simple. Like, yes. I always dreaded it. Now that I do them, it's like they're nothing. Yep. Like yep. compared to other stuff like mill finish or satin finish stainless to sand it out and polish it like. Yep, shut the shop down for two days. Yeah. Like, this is going to suck. And there's guys that want me to do bumpers and visors. It's like, I am not comfortable doing that. Either. Oh, yeah, bumpers suck. Unless you're pulling it off and I can mount it on the wall and I can walk end to end, I don't like doing them. 
But that still sounds like it sucks because I mean you gotta you have to. Blow I have a big wingspan, so it's fine. I mean, yeah, we're talking I'm not eight foot freaking tall. <laughs> dude, so. So. But visors suck too because it, it gets them up on a goofy angle and you can't keep consistent pressure. Like a lot of people end up with lines in their visor just because the visor sits at an angle that you're looking at it that isn't appealing for buffing. I mean, it's a different angle. I got one last question. All right. Because you've asked me this, the highlight of my career. Yeah. Has anybody asked you that? Um, I don't know. Because I'm asking you right now. All right. I know it's going to be hard. You can narrow it down to like, well, however many you want. I would say probably the highlight of my career if I had to name one thing, which I've, I've had a lot of really good ones, so this is a tough one. Like, man, if I had to pick a top 10, I couldn't put numbers on the top 10. I could tell you what my top 10 are, but I couldn't like put an actual number on it. Yeah. But if I had to, if I had to pick, like what's been the highlight, highlight of my career? The Marshall will come back. I mean, oh man, this is brutal. <laughs> like I, I really got to think about. I mean, this you somewhere. got a lot of highlights if you ask me. I wish. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. It's like all yeah, these people hard, have been a, a, have been a pivotal part in my life. Like I've had so many best of shows that I was like, God, I was great, grateful to be a part of that, and it's just so many different things. All right, I, I would have to say my top was. Chris Fifey coming in and doing the documentary because that has been one of the pivotal parts in my career like when Chris and I sat down and we were talking about doing this video I wanted I didn't want the video to necessarily be just about us I wanted it to be about people seeing the business side of the industry because I've talked about this a hundred times there's crackheads and tweakers and all kinds of stuff sitting in truck stops and then there's guys like you that are paying taxes that yeah. are trying to do it right and it, it you don't want to screw a customer over on purpose you would never show up on a job site make your customer pay for sandpaper you'd go and never come back no like that's not the person you are no. so when we sat down to talk about doing the documentary I said the main thing I wanted people to see was that there was people like myself there's people like you there's people like all of my franchises. There's guys out there like Kaufman, uh, Fredette. Um, just trying to think of some of the other big business guys that I know of. We sell to a, a, just a lot of guys yeah. that are doing it right. I wanted those guys to get some of these jobs that the tweakers were getting in the truck stops. And nothing against truck stop polishers. I have nothing against those guys. They're hustling, they're making yeah, their money are. too. But at the same time, I wanted more business people to get credit in the industry because I wanted people to give them the respect they deserve. Like, I get it, everybody wants to negotiate something, but if you're going to a guy that has a shop, pays taxes, or a guy that comes to your shop, has insurance, is paying his taxes, mm -hmm. shouldn't be trying to get this guy to do it for $10 a wheel like the truck stop tweaker is. Yeah. Like, it's not fair to that guy. I want you to understand the amount of stuff that goes into paying unemployment, payroll taxes, insurance. Insurance is a big one. My unemployment, and it's ridiculous. Like, if I have a $15 an hour employee, by the time I factor in all their unemployment, payroll taxes, and insurance, that employee is a $30 an hour employee. Yeah. And if I'm making $10 a wheel, <laughs> and it takes me three hours or an hour to do three wheels. Like those three wheels have gone to pay that employee to do it. And I haven't put anything yep. into the business. Like yep. it, I get everybody wants to get something for nothing. But and getting to spend time with Chris, and I don't know if Chris is listening to any of these videos or the podcasts or my YouTube channel. Chris is just an amazing creature. Like if you ever get a chance to sit down and talk with Chris Fifey. <laughs> He is very similar to me. He gives you the time of day. He will take the time to talk to you and make sure that you are happy with the conversation before he moves on. Like, 
I, I've, I've been blessed enough to be able to say I stayed in Chris's house one time when I was down there and Chris treated me like family. Mm -hmm. his, his family is, they're great people. They are just as humble as all get out and Chris is the give you the shirt off his back kind of guy. I mean, I've never actually seen him do that, but I, <laughs> I think he I'll would. I'll take your word for it, yeah. I think he would. And I've gotten to spend a lot of time with Chris. He let me go with him. I drove Mission Control, his, his really? car for a, a couple rolling interviews really? and he operated his camera while I drove. Those were some of the greatest memories I've had of the show circuit. Honestly, I've watched a lot of his videos. I think I've watched all of them. I think I don't know if I've watched all of them, but a lot of the guys I knew too. Yep. Uh, there's some IMT guys on Yeah. There, and I know I've seen them, I've talked to them. And the coolest thing is, is he takes the time out of his day to appreciate somebody who doesn't usually get appreciated yeah that's the cool thing to me i mean he takes just i mean it could be any joe schmo it doesn't even have to be a show chop yeah it's just gotta be something looking cool exactly on, right? yeah and, and honestly one of my top tens i'll just throw this in there for a little snippet but one of my top tens is getting to meet brockway gouge oh really yeah so yeah. he came to show rotel the one year with his dad yeah. and i had been talking to him for a few years before that yep. like he was kind of picking my brain learning polishing yep. and he was struggling with some stuff and him and his dad rolled up and he's like Evan it's so awesome to meet you he's like I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong I'm like your truck needs to get touched up for the show like you bring your respirator he's like yeah yeah I'm like hook up to my generator let's go we'll polish right now like I'll show yeah. you exactly what I do you show me what you do and I'll critique you while you're doing it and uh, Brockway we get done and he's like I'm gonna have dad cut you a check for $500 I'm like why you polish that truck yourself like I just helped you and I'm not charging you for doing those two wheels like that was nothing and mm -hmm. the one tank like it was nothing it was that was at Tulsa actually yeah, yeah it was just during that show and I'm like for what it's worth like you don't owe me anything like you're a great kid I didn't realize he was only like 15 or 16 yeah he doesn't time. he doesn't look like I've been polishing for like 13 yeah. years but he's massive like yeah they grow bigger boys over there oh, <laughs> like corn fed bread man yeah and he's a beast, like, yeah. and I didn't realize I had been talking to him, I think since he was like 13, helping him polish. Really? So like when I actually got to meet him, and I was like, dude, I've been talking to you for three years. Like I thought he was 18, and I'd been talking to him, <laughs> or like he was 20, and I've been talking to him for three years since 17, but it turned out he was like 13 when he started polishing. And he's like, I'm gonna have to cut you a check for $500, and for what? He's like, for training me. I'm like, no, like, listen, you got me on a good day. Like, we were done with all of our trucks for the day anyways. You were the last one of the day. like." No, we're good. He's like, no, 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 I, I owe you something. I'm like, you don't owe me anything. And they've got some of the coolest shirts in the they industry. They do, they do, 100%. And uh, they got the keep on trucking shirt. Yep. And I said, if you feel like you have to give me something, the only thing I want is one of those keep on trucking shirts. Like, I love the old school nostalgia that they have on all their shirts. Like, they got the pinstripe sleeves uh -huh. and they got all the, just all the cool stuff. Yep. I said, Brockway, if you want to send me anything, just send me one shirt, extra large, or large tall, whichever mm -hmm. you have. That's all I want, it's just that one keep on trucking shit. That's pretty cool. He's like, all right, so you got my address. Like, I don't know, two weeks later, this box shows up and it's like <laughs> two foot by, or yeah, no 18 inches shirt. by 18 inches and it's like three foot tall. And I'm like, what is this? And I look at it, it says from IMT. And I pop it open and it's literally a short sleeve, a long sleeve, and a hoodie of every shirt design they had. It was probably $500 worth of shirts. I'm like, I call it Broadway, I'm like, thank you, but I what told you you didn't owe me $500. <laughs> like, this has gotta be $500 oh, worth yeah. of shirts. He's like, Evan, I appreciate you. And him and his dad, Brockway and Jeremy, have been big supporters of me for yes. a long time. I gotta give them a shout out and thank you. They're big supporters of my golf outing every year. They've donated big every year since we started it. Um, super grateful for those guys. And Brockway's always been like in my back pocket, oh, always yeah. there to like support, mm -hmm. represent anything that was ever going on. He had my back. Yep, I met him the first time at Albert Lee. And they're just such a great family. I, yeah. I need to get out to. We're, actually, I was just talking to him yesterday. I think they're going to be bringing two trailers up here uh, for me to do. And I'm super excited because like, I haven't really done anything for those guys. Mm -hmm. They've just been super supportive. And I've done stuff for Ken Fisher over the years. Yep, and Ken's yep. been with IMT for yep. quite a while. Um, and I've done... IMT has a charge cone here, so some of their guys just swing through. 
the shop once in a while. If they're in the area, they swing in, I squeeze them in, we polish them up, send them the bill, and it's done and over with. So I've had a great relationship with Jeremy. Every time I see those guys at a truck show, we go and we hang out, we oh, yeah. shoot the breeze, like just honest to goodness, old school yeah. trucker, great people. And uh, he's in my top 10. Because getting to see where he started to where he is, he's grateful and humble for it. And he, now he's driving truck. Like, yeah, it's awesome to he's see. He's got one badass truck. Kids Sorry, doing swear that. again. <laughs> no, you're good. I think yeah. we're only at like three or four. So we're that good. Was, that is a sweet truck. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So, I love it. yeah, top one is probably the the documentary of Five Feet, and another one in that top ten is getting to hang out with Brockway because just yeah. old school cool. He is. They have some really old school cool trucks. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I, I need to get over there and see their, we call it the museum, but yeah. he's got a whole garage full of cool bikes and stuff. It'd be cool to see. Got to come to Lifetime next yeah. week. Yeah. I'm going to try to get there. I told I told JR I wished him a happy birthday yesterday. Yeah. Because yep. it was his birthday, so I wished him a happy birthday. And Dude, that cab over is sick. Yeah. I want to see it in person. It like, he sent so me a bunch of pictures while they were person. doing it, and he's like, can you, can you get me buttoned up at the show? Because mm -hmm. he knew you weren't going to make it. Yep. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do what I can. And then the show ended up canceling, so yeah. I didn't have to worry about it. But yep. yeah, JR's always hit me up every show we ever go to. He's like, Evan, you got me? Yeah. I'm like, ah, I got you. Like, always. <laughs> the hardest me. thing for me was is I was doing some wheels for him. It was one of the trucks that he was, he was doing something for a, a customer's truck. And I went in there, and I had to keep my mouth shut. That was the hardest thing. Yeah, the trucks that I, mean, I can't talk about oh, until they get to the show. Yeah. That's hard. That's hard because you do some cool stuff and you're like, God, I just want to tell everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's brutal. And Dad, I, oh, it's always nice to have one up on Dad, so that's, <laughs> that's kind of cool. <laughs> but, yeah, no, that was that was a hard one to keep them all shut. Not take a picture of it, just to have it on your phone and be like, God, that was a sweet truck. When I mean, the show finally comes out and I can post these pictures. Well, like, then he started put he put one on Facebook of him hooked up when he, I don't know if he went to Tampa or wherever he went with a load, but, yeah, no, that was... In person, we see nothing like pictures. Yeah. It's awesome. JR doesn't do anything half ass. No. So, oh, no. Yeah. Okay. It'd be cool to see that thing in person. It's, you got it, JR. He's going to be there. You heard <laughs> I'm going to try. I can't give any guarantees yet. You know how it is. It yeah, gets crazy you. around here, but I'm going to try. But we got to get you out of here so you can get over to your cousin's wedding. Yeah. So I appreciate having you on. Hopefully, you, you and uh, Gage yeah. get up here. I'd like to have you back on again in a future episode yeah. and have the two of you on together. Um, oh, I, I want to start getting polishers and their employees involved in this stuff. And I know you guys are kind of partners in this deal, yep. it seems like. Kind of, yeah, I mean. I don't, I don't want to get into yeah, the details, yeah. but. He's going to school yet, so yeah. I, don't want to, I don't want to hold him back for, I mean, he's a heck of a football player. Yeah. So I want him to go do his thing and yeah. just if let him know that he's always got something here yeah. for me. Well, that's cool. I'd like to get you guys both up here, hang out, and actually polish for a day. I want to polish for a day, 100%. And then um, also get on and do some more podcasts and maybe do some videos in the shop with some how-tos with That'd you guys awesome. so that uh, people That'd can awesome. see that a couple of guys two years in, you guys got it figured out. So be able to show that people that have learned through YouTube and learned through trial and error can do the same thing. It you. works. Yeah. And honestly, for those of you guys watching, watch his videos. You can watch them over and over and over, but watch his videos. What he's what he's feeding you is a bologna sandwich. I mean, it's 100% what he does in the shop. So just watch it, yeah. watch him over again. I mean, we try not to sugarcoat too much. No, I mean, what you do is, and the stuff he's using the same stuff that he's selling you guys. Yeah. So that's yeah. The you walk through the shop. I was gonna saw. say I walk through it. Everything that I buy, he uses. Yeah. He's got a separate spot. So yeah, like. <laughs> It's 100% realistic. So. The show compounds are the only thing that's different on our show stuff, but that's going to be accessible to the public here real soon. We, we're we in the final development stages. I just sent out the brown to my franchises now that we have it close. Um, we sent out the brown to another one of our customers that does a bunch of show trucks, and we're going to see what he thinks, and then we're making the final decision here within the next couple of weeks. So Awesome. I can't wait, dude. Yeah. I cannot wait. But I appreciate having you on. Oh, I appreciate Can't it. Can't wait until you engage get back and get we'll hang get out. Here. So. We'll get here and we'll lay some shine. Yeah. It's going right. to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Sounds good. Until next time. Thanks, man. Appreciate, appreciate you. it. Thanks, guys.